Hello, in this video we're going to look at, Nip, look at Nip Lipinoff's Central Limit Theorem and it was first described in a paper in 1900 or 1901, somewhere around there. And it's very similar to Lindenberg's condition but the sufficient condition for the convergence to a standard normal distribution is a little different. A little more stringent than the Lindenberg condition. So let's let Sn be the sum of these random variables xk from n goes from 1 to infinity. xk are independent. They're not identically distributed so they can have different means and different variances, both finite. We're going to let Tn be this uh, quantity where Cn is the variance of Sn which is the sum of these xk's. Now I put in these these double arrows here because if we replace this with another with Lindenberg's condition then the theorem also holds but we're putting in here uh, Lipinoff's criteria or condition and which is this it's the sum of these expected values converge to zero and this is for some delta and of course as n goes to infinity then Tn converges to a random variable that has a standard normal distribution. Now this condition is sometimes more easier, if that's the right word, <laughs> it's easier to prove than uh, Lindenberg's condition. And so this just has to hold for some delta. So sometimes we just pick delta 1. So if the, the cube of this quantity converges to 0, then uh, Lipinoff's condition is met. But the theorem just says for any delta greater than zero. Okay, so a note that in 1922, Lindenberg proved a less stringent su sufficient condition. And that's, as I mentioned, and that's what this is. And the two previous videos, we looked at this condition and what it got us. Um, so in this video, we're going to show that Lipinoff's criteria or condition implies the Lim Lindenberg condition. And, and the, then in the next video, we're going to prove the Lindenberg Central Limit Theorem. So in this video, we're going to show if this condition is true, then this condition must be true. And then we'll look at an example. So proof, let's first assume Lipinoff's condition. So that's that this, con this quantity converges to zero for some delta greater than zero, and of course as n goes to infinity. So let's just look at this expectation first without the sum and then this divisor here. So this can be broken, it's the expected value is of course the integral. And that's, that's uh, the exponent can be broken up and is to this quantity squared plus this quantity raised to the delta. And then instead of integrating over the whole space, we're going to restrict where we integrate. And so first we break this piece up, and this is the Riemann-Stilts notation for uh, integration. But here we restrict the integration to this range. And this, of course, is the... Uh, range for the Lindenberg condition. So now since this condition holds if we you know this piece here is this piece so if we stick in something smaller here then the integral gets even smaller. So that's what we do we stick in this piece for this of course raised to the delta and then this then everything else is, is the same and it gets smaller. So now why we did that was this. So if we divide this, these two quantities to here, so it's this expectation, expectation divided by these two quantities is greater than this integral here. Okay, so now if we sum from k equals 1 to n on both sides, we get what follows. So we're going to take this piece here, we're going to sum from k equals 1 to n, we're also going to divide by cn squared. Now we just showed up here 
that this is less than this piece. So now that notice the one divided by cn squared are the same, the sums are the same, and then this, in this quantity we get from this piece here. Well, these are constant in regards to um, well let me let me if we take the CN here then we get CN 2 plus Delta okay and then this is a fixed quantity epsilon raised to the Delta but if the Lipinoff's criteria is satisfied so this there's no K so it can be brought out front well if we assume that that goes to zero so then it then it has to be true so this converges to zero which means that the Lindenberg condition converges to zero so anyway so that's a proof that the um, Lipinoff's condition implies the Lindenberg condition now let's look at a quick example so let's let XK be Bernoulli with some parameter PK um, let's let YK equal XK minus PK and XK are independent not identically distributed as you can see because the mean um, and variance will be not be the same but if we look at the mean of YK we get zero because the mean of this is PK and PK minus PK is zero so the variance of this you can ignore the constant and the variance of this is just the variance of Bernoulli which is PK 1 minus PK which we're going to call Sigma K squared and we're going to let CN be the variance of SN and, and I should have written this SN which is the sum of the Y first but I wrote it second so it's the sum of these variances and we want to show that SN divided by this standard deviation converges in distribution to zero so a note first note that for any delta greater than zero we have that the expected value of yk raised to 2 plus k is equal to well we split them up and this piece right here is is less than or equal to one so if we get rid of it, we just increase the quantity. But the expected value of yk squared, since the mean is zero, that's the variance, which we're calling sigma k, which is pk one minus k, which is of course less than or equal to one. So if we, now we look at the Lipinoff's condition where we sum from k equals one to n of this condition, divide by uh, CN raised to the 2 plus delta so according to this this quantity is less than this so this piece is less than uh, Sigma K squared but this piece here is the definition of CN squared right so this is CN squared which cancels with that CN squared leaving CN delta which is this now if CN goes to infinity then the Lipinoff condition is satisfied and this is true if PK is bounded away from 0 or 1 then CN does go to infinity so if we can uh, keep pk away from 0 or 1 then the then the Lipinoff condition is met and therefore sn over cn converges in distribution to a standard normal distribution yep well that's all i have for today hope you enjoyed it i sure did uh, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye